Reminiscence is a analog film noir romantic thriller. Nothing is more addictive than the past. The whole construction of the script is based on reminiscences of memories. You've got Hugh Jackman who runs this nostalgia center and Tandy Newton, his assistant, and basically people come in, they go into a tank. Hugh takes them down this verbal cue. They go down this emotional path and the images of their lives appear on this uh, nostalgia machine. And the reason people go to it is because it's really reliving the memories in the, in the way that they actually believe they experienced them for the first time. We're closed. I know, I'm sorry it's late. We have time for one more job. It's very convoluted and interesting how it, uh, all the aspects of it are weaved with the memories and the tank and then Hugh's experience. You're going on a journey, a journey through memory. All you have to do is follow my voice. Working with Lisa Joy is great. She's a, you know, she's a consummate filmmaker. This is her first directorial debut for a feature film. And, you know, Lisa loves movies. You know, we looked at a, a number of very esoteric films like Tarkovsky films and films that had to do with memory. And, you know, specifically for the look, we kind of brought up body heat, you know, just kind of looked at the skin tones, the sweat and the humidity that you feel in those scenes during body heat. And that kind of became a roadmap. And we discussed, you know, warm skin tones and this kind of overwhelming feeling of heat, you know, throughout the film. And did a lot of photographs and kind of just found our own visual path with it, yeah. I actually built this nostalgia machine on a small stage in town here and did some initial testing and I realized that in order to, to, to do live projection I'd have to, you know, use a, a, a higher ISO. Um, you know, I'd shot a few films with the Venice and, you know, loved the, uh, the Venice and the color space and the the sensor on the Venice and, you know, specifically did a lot of testing with the Westworld film versus Venice and how we would integrate Venice on, on Westworld and, you know, so that kind of revealed a lot of aspects of what you get on screen when you're sitting there looking at it. Specifically for Reminiscence, it, it just became the 2500 mode became like, well, in order to shoot live projection, I had to be in 2500 mode. That sounds great until you're shooting at super light low levels at 2500. It basically looks incredibly dark. So if you're shooting, you know, at a, a two, which we often were, or two three or something like that on the Venice, on the anamorphic lenses, maybe two eight, it's unbelievable how dark it is. <laughs> you know, so you're, you're shooting at this high ISO and yet you're getting all this information. So I bounce back to 500 oftentimes if the projection was bright enough or if it was in between projection sequences or whatever. And I, I think like any cinematographer who start shooting the 2500 mode in Venice, it's like this leap of faith, like you can't really believe you're getting these results. 2500 mode, is, it's magical because you get these results, but it's also daunting because it's such a lo low light level. I look at all film stocks and, and digital camera systems as kind of film, I call them film stocks in general, you know, and it's um, what's appropriate for, for that material. And, you know, certainly going back to collateral, I got five stops to make. What's your name? Max. Max. I'm Vincent. You know, the Sony 950, that was, you know, was, a, was really the only camera that I could have shot that film with at that time, you know. And, you know, we've gone through phases of my career where film stocks, they become less grainy, they have a little color attribution. And then you, you know, suddenly you get, um, you know, new digital systems like the Sony Venice and it's quite appealing. It's like a different type of film stock for me. It's got its own kind of idiosyncratic beauty to it. The strength of it is really in the, in the, in the sensor and the color rendition. And, and, you know, I was surprised even in the 2500 mode how well the color rendition holds up, knowing that, you know, there's, there's some push and pull with, you know, red, green, and blue there to get that ISO up there, you know, so, you know, it's, it's quite amazing to see the results. <laughs> Machine of yours. How close can you get? The other attribute for the Venice uh, camera for me is the internal NDs, and and you know I think for for a lot of cinematographers that's just a tool to get you wide open. 
you know, like whatever, whatever, however bright things are, I can go wide open here somehow. I think I come, you know, uh, uh, from a slightly different perspective and I really believe in kind of the psychology of depth of field. It's important to me to kind of ground people and shots. So oftentimes you see films where, where you know, you go to the close-ups and everything is just blurry in the background and that people are, you know, basically floating in space. And, you know, I really believe in kind of managing depth of field and, and on the Sony Venice it's just, I do everything on the camera myself. I change the ISO base, I change the NDs, I change the, you know, everything. I'm very physical with the cameras and out of all the digital kind of camera systems out there, this one is kind of has everything I need in a very particular way. It's got the color space, it's got the depth of field management, and it's got the 2500 mode. It's a big technological leap to have that. You know, you, you know, we have other great camera systems, digital camera systems available, but if I'm not mistaken, this is the only one that truly has this kind of ISO base that is quite stunning, and it's, it's very particular, and it, it's a massive attribute for a cinematographer to have that choice. A lot of shows that are kind of welcoming, you know, lower light and shooting in lower light and kind of just enhancing that and, and creating these kind of darker stories very successfully. And, and I think, you know, certainly the Venice has contributed as a very, very distinct color, I mean, distinct stock, you know, film stock to me is the way I look at it, you know.